Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us tonight. Once again, I'm Kelsey Hattisall, horticulture agent for the River Valley District. And with me tonight is Cassie Homan from the Post Rock District. <laughs> and thank you for joining us for our last session of horticulture hot topics. To I get to wrap up tonight with how to control bagworms. How many of you all have bagworms, right? Yes. Yes. I do. Yes, okay. That's what I figured with most of you here, we're wanting to know how to get rid of them, right? Well, so we're gonna talk about the life cycle of the bagworm today, and most importantly, how to get rid of it. So this picture here on the front is just a cool one I found out at our local golf course last August when I was golfing with a friend. And I like to show this picture because it is too late in the season by this point in time in August to treat these bagworms. And we're gonna talk a little bit later on why. So let's just dive on in to, there we go. What type of bag, what bagworms like to eat? So host plants that bagworms like are anything that is really on this list, you can see a bagworm eating on it. So you have the Eastern red cedar, junipers and arborvitaes are their favorite. So those are the, what they will go to first, first choice of eating and attacking otherwise, but they will move to spruces and pines, as well as broadleaf trees, shrubs, and ornamentals. Um, I have seen them growing on roses, as well as maple trees in the past. And if the, we even have, if they have a lack of all of that to find, they will also feed on clover and ragweed and parsley as well. So this picture up top, just I put it on there to show how dense a population of bagworms can be on one limb of one tree. So it's one of those, once you have bagworms, you need to treat for them because if not, they're gonna wipe out whatever tree or shrub they're eating on, as well as move on to anything else in this list. But cedar trees are their favorite. So now the life cycle. If we can understand the life cycle, we can figure out how these grow, we can treat them a little easier and get them killed a little easier. So they overwinter as eggs. Well, they overwinter as eggs inside the bags on the tree. They normally hatch between mid-May through June. So I was out and about last week and didn't notice them out yet, but I have been told that they are out and about this week, they're starting to grow. I'll show you a little bit later of what to look at on your trees to see if that yours are out and about yet. They do not all hatch at one time. They come out in stages. So some of them will hatch this week, some of them will hatch next week, and some of them will hatch the third, second to third week of June. So it's one of those, once you start seeing them out and about, that's when you need to start treating. So what happens is a picture in the top, the larva drop out of the bag and kind of just form this on this fine strand of silk. The larva is what's up here curling around as the baby bagworms. And they'll just swing around and blow around until they come in contact with the foliage. Once they hit the foliage, they're gonna immediately start constructing and building these bags that they're gonna live in. Once they've done that, I'm gonna start to feed on your tree. So right now it's very, not very noticeable. You have to know what to look for in order to notice that they're even out there. Cause this, when they're this small, you can't even tell. By mid to late August, they are done feeding and they are through that part of the life cycle to where they're going to be starting to um, have eggs and the males will come out of the bags and that kind of stuff. So once we hit mid-August, it's really too late to spray for them and we'll talk a little bit more about that why here in just a second. So once they're done feeding for the year, they anchor themselves to the branch and then they seal themselves inside. So once they're, once they're sealed inside, the insecticide's not gonna get to it. So that's why we say spraying in August or September is really too late to get these bagworms. So 
the life cycle of the bagworm is that the male moths are here on the bottom right with the wings. The males are black with clear wings and kind of look like a moth type thing almost. So once they've sealed into their bags in August, they will go through stages and pop out of the bottom of that bag, which I have some pictures of to show you later. And then they fly around until they can find the female bags. Normally you see the female bags are located at the top of the tree or shrub, like they're at the top of it and, and the male bags are at the lower end of the tree. So if you're trying to find the female bags, you're gonna have to look up really high in the tree. And the reason we worry about the female bags is because of the giant number of eggs that these females produce. One single female bagworm can produce 500 to 1,000 eggs in one bag. So this is why once you get in infestation of bagworms, they're really hard to get rid of and they can wipe out an entire hedgerow of cedar trees in no, in no seconds flat if you don't treat for them. So once the male bagworm mates with the female bagworm, the female bagworm then lays her eggs and essentially dies inside this bag on the tree. And then so the eggs are stay inside the dead female all winter and then come out in the spring. So we like to say that the winter, if we have a really cold winter, it could kill some of them. Yes, it'll kill some of them, but that bag itself is super hard to get through. And then, so not only do they have the bag, the cold tempers have to get through the bag, they also have to get through the female bagworm that the eggs are inside. So winter, if you're gonna bank on the winter killing them, it's probably not gonna be the best way for control. The only good thing with bagworms, unlike other insects, is bagworms only have one generation per year. So they're coming out now, they'll feed all summer, and then they'll go through the stages in August. I like to show this slide because it shows the progression of the bagworms and, and shows how it's easier to treat them when they're younger. So once again, this is up in the top left, it's the male bagworm with the, with the moth wings. And then, so here in the top where it says late May with the green arrow, that's when they're super tiny, super small and easy to control. As you go into June, you can see that that bag starts to get bigger. As the bag gets bigger into late June into July, that's when you start to actually, you can see them from a distance once you get into July and August. By the time you're seeing them at a distance, it's really too late to treat them because the worms are too big and they're already too far gone in their bag to be able to control them well. You can get some control in late, late July to August, but you're not gonna get as good of control as you would if you would spray for them right now. So this is just breaking it down a little bit more and bring in the pictures a little bit closer and easier to see. So once again, in late May, you have the smaller larva or caterpillars as we call them sometimes, and they're just small. They're very hard to see unless you're really getting in your trees and looking for them, but they're the most effectively killed at this state. Once they start to get a little bigger here in July, they become harder to kill. They're not completely, you can't, it's not like you can't kill some of them, but like I said, they're not as easy. You will start seeing a little, the damage that they're causing will be a little bit more noticeable, as well as you can start to see the bags forming on the tree. Once we get into August, we're gonna call that the danger zone because you're rapidly, those bagworms are rapidly eating because they're ending their life cycle. So they're eating as much as they can, as fast as they can, can and they're consuming lots of it because they are so much bigger now than they were in May, so they have to eat more. They're always noticeable at this stage, and this is always when us hort agents get all these questions about how to kill your bagworms. So we thought we'd talk about that tonight, so maybe we get a few less questions here in August. But normally the older caterpillars are way harder to control, even if they are out and feeding more, and just on it, it takes more chemical to kill, to get them. This is a picture from one of our um, 
entomologist specialist at K-State that he did, and he's just studied the bagworms so much that he just shows the difference in the caterpillars at their stages now in late late May to what they are in August, and it just shows that why it's a little easier to get to get them killed at when they're younger. So let's talk about developmental stages of the bagworms. So the small larvae that are growing now and into the first part of June are not going to be as hard. They're not going to eat as much, so you're not really going to see the destruction that they're causing. They're small caterpillars, they're only taking small, small amounts of plant material at one time. You see them later in the developmental stages because they require more food to eat, and so it looks like you could literally come out one night and see nothing, and the next day your entire tree looks like it's gone. So on the bottom right is a picture I took last year of a rose bush at the, here in town that had bagworms feeding on it. So this is feeding on its leaves. There's one up right there just above my finger, and then there's one on the other side of the other leaf too. And then the bottom left picture shows it feeding on a evergreen tree, and it just shows how they form that bag around them because there you can see the little black part, their head's out and about there, but they're within their bag. So that's why they're also, as they get bigger, that bag starts to grow with the size of the worm. And so they're in their bag more, so it's also harder to kill them because once the bags get bigger, they get thicker and tougher and harder to penetrate with chemical. You don't see as much damage with deciduous trees as you do with your evergreens or your coniferous trees. So the deciduous trees are like your oaks and maples, the good thing with them is that they can rapidly repl replenish their foliage if something would happen, and they are better at withstanding that damage because they have more reserves. Whereas your coniferous or evergreen trees, once they lose those leaves, they don't, once they lose those needles, excuse me, they don't really come, come back from that as easily. Um, this is also from one of our specialists at K-State. He did an experiment in his backyard to just prove how much damage bagworms can do. And this is one worth of dam one year's worth of damage on this tree. He literally said he put bagworms on there just to see how fast it could go. And this was one year's destruction. So if you have a lot of bagworms on your windbreaks or things like that, one year is all it really takes to wipe out in a whole bunch of trees. The best way to get rid of bagworms is to handpick them. It is the most effective way of killing bagworms. It is also the most tedious way of getting and killing bagworms. You normally don't, we don't recommend handpicking if your tree is really tall or really infested because that's just not as easily done. But if you want to try it, you can go off and don't pick the bags off now because it's a little too late for that. We normally recommend hand picking in August and throughout the winter because that's once the bag worms are in their bags for the winter and you're not going anywhere. So to kill them, once you've picked them off, you can put them in like a five gallon bucket and you soak them in one fluid ounce of soap per gallon of water. So you just put that in the bottom of your five gallon bucket for 15 to 20 minutes let them soak in there real good, and then pour them out on the ground. So pour them out where they're gonna get some sun. So pour them out on the concrete of your driveway or sidewalk or something where the sun can get them and it'll essentially burn them and they'll be gone. Um, make sure though, if you're doing the, this method to not put this soapy water on top of plants or grass as it will burn the foliage and hurt your grass or plants. Don't put your bag rooms in a compost pile because they overwinter and you'll essentially be creating more bag worms. Uh, if you're gonna pick them off, we recommend that to do that all winter, but to make sure you're done by late April, early May, because it depends on the spring. 
Some springs we've been warm enough and they stayed warm enough, they're out the first part of May and other times they're not. So it's just best to choose by April to the beginning of May, you got those picked if that's what you're gonna do. If you're gonna choose to hand pick them, make sure you get in there real good within your tree because they could be hidden deep within the tree itself and closer towards the trunk. They just don't stay on the outside edges where they're easy to get to. So here are just some pictures of what that looks like. So there is the bagworm that is the, they're pinching it out to show, make it appear, but you don't have to do that every time. You can just throw them in the bucket. And so you throw them in the bucket and it softens the bags and they come out of the bags and then you throw them on the ground and let the sun do its job and it essentially burns them and kills them and then you won't have to deal with them anymore. If hand picking is not an option for you because you're either too infested or your trees are too tall or you just don't want to stand out there for hours on end in the winter picking bagworms off your tree, then you can go the insecticide route. So we like to recommend that once they reach the damaging level of there's no coming back from it, you need to get them off, you need to eliminate them right now before you lose your entire windbreak or tree or whatever. So once again, this is most easily controlled when they're small in the developmental stage. So right now is the best time to treat for bagworms. And you need to make sure that if you had bagworms last year, they didn't just disappear. Even if you had just a few of them, you need to be out looking now because they're gonna be back. They don't just not come back after a year. Um, like I said earlier, normally mid to late May, um, I was out and about last week and didn't really see them, but I've seen and been told that they're out and about now. So if you wait a week to start spraying, you'd probably go ahead and get a bunch of them out, but you need to make sure you look at your tree yourself. So the reason they're so hard to see is because when they first emerge, they are absolutely tiny. So the picture on the left that's got the yellow circle around it is what a small bagworm looks like now. That's why we like to say you need to get out and look at your tree really good to make sure you can find them because they will just blend in. Especially if you have some of your trees have a little winter kill on them that are brown on the end of the tips, then these bagworms are just gonna blend right in and you won't even know they're there until it's too late. So normally when they first emerge, they're three to four centimeters long and they're brownish bags and they kind of stand out once you get in there looking at them, but from far away, you're not gonna be able to see them. So you're gonna have to get up close and personal with your tree to make sure that you're looking at them. If you look at them long enough, they will be moving. And so you will know that they are in there feeding because the whole bag will be moving as you stand there and look at it. It's not just your eyes, they really are moving the entire time you're standing. And the picture on the right, I just like to show that one too because it just shows the proximity of this tree probably is very infested with bagworms because there's two of them that close together. Normally they're clumped, but not when they're younger, they're not that clumped together. So as long as the bagworms are actively out eating or foraging, they can be controlled. They are easily controlled as they're younger, but you can do get a little bit of control as they're bigger. So when you spray your tree with the insecticide, you are not, you're getting it, you're killing the worm in essentially two different ways. You're gonna get some of them that are hit directly by the insecticide because they're gonna be out feeding when you spray. And so it's gonna kill them on contact. Otherwise, that insecticide is gonna stick on to your plant material for a while. And once the bagworms come out and start feeding on that material, then they will eat the, in the, the plant foliage that has the chemical on it. They'll eat it and they'll still kill them from that way too. So you not only get them killed by direct contact, you also get them killed after they consume a little bit more material, plant foliage on your tree and it'll get them that way too. So they wanna make sure that when you're spraying is that you have good coverage, top, bottom, inside out. You wanna make sure you soak your tree down and make sure you get every nook and cranny and branch and 
needle you can with your insecticide just so that you have the best chance of getting the majority of them killed. More than likely, you're going to need multiple applications. Um, it depends. A lot of it is going to be on what spray you use. So you always read the label and follow the directions on how much to spray as well as how often you need to spray. Like I said earlier, not all of the bagworms come out at one time. So not all of them are gonna hatch this week and not all of them are gonna hatch next week. So you just read, read the label of your insecticide and that will show you and tell you how many times you need to spray. Normally it's once every two to three weeks again. So here's the big question that I always get a lot is what can I use to kill my bagworms? So right now when bagworms are young, this diple is the best thing to use. I like to use say that one because I will honestly let anybody say that giant scientific name there in italics that they want to because I will butcher it. So we'll just go with diple. Um, it does come in a dust that you can use for vegetables, but there is a liquid version of it too. And uh, we like to recommend this one because it works when works great when the caterpillars are young. Um, you got to get them here within the first couple weeks of emergence. So if you're going to spray, say tomorrow or next week, you can use diple. And the good thing we like about it is that it only kills caterpillars. There's some insecticides out there, the rest of them that could kill other insects as well. But the diple only gets the caterpillars. So another one that people use all the time is malathion or the Tempo is the brand name, or the Permethrian. If you've been spraying bagworms for a while and you're using the same chemical, maybe just switch chemicals, switch to a different one, um, just so that you don't build up that tolerance. It's um, just a good idea to switch chemicals from time to time, no matter what you're spraying or what you're spraying for. And just remember to spray early and frequently because especially if you have a big infestation of them, you, the, the more you can spray earlier, the, be, the better. So the que other question I always get a lot that I like to point on is when is it too late to spray? And I get calls in the first part of August and they wanna know, is it too late? Can I get them sprayed now? Is it gonna kill them? Well, that's it. with bagworms, it's super easy to tell when it's too late. So once the bagworm has completed its feeding cycle, it will anchor itself to the tree so it doesn't blow away through our, through our winters. And it, we, it likes to do that with this white tie is what I'm gonna call it because it's easier to understand. So in the picture on the bottom, it's got that yellow circle around it. The white stuff that's wrapped around the branch mean, is the silk white tie. That means it's already in its bag for the winter. It's not gonna do any good to spray it because it's not gonna penetrate that bag that it's built so there's no reason to spray now because it's going to be a waste of your time and money because the bagworms have completed their life cycle and they're moved on so this is a time where you can either pull them off if you want but with that silk tie you're gonna have to pull really hard to get them off or you just remember that you need to spray next year and that you spray earlier next year and that should and that'll help control it so if you've seen them before when you got the white silk tie on it it's too late to spray they're already in for the winter no reason to worry about it just remember it next year another question we like to touch on is how do, how much damage is too damaged will it come back well with evergreens that's kind of touchy because you can be damaged beyond the point of no return but sometimes they look like they're gone, but they actually come back. So if you have a questions about it, you can just leave it. If you don't mind looking at an almost dead tree for a little while, leave it alone and see if it'll come back. The pictures on the bottom are, to the one on the left shows what the initial damage was when they got the bag rooms treated and under control. And then it took two years for them to grow back here on the picture on the right. And you can't really even tell that they had bag room damage. Um, you can tell a little bit on one of them, but that's just because I'm I can, I'm picky like that, so I can tell there's a little bit of damage still there, but that's not a big deal. So once the populations have been reduced or eliminated, you can sometimes see the tree will come back in as little to three to four months or as long as it takes, or it could take up to two years or longer. So this is the one where it takes two years 
and then here is a bigger, more standard tree, and they treated them in June when they first saw it, and then four months later in October, you couldn't even tell that you had had bagworm damage. So it's one of those, once you see it, your trees aren't, it's not a death sentence for your trees unless you don't treat for your bagworms. We're gonna finish up here today with just a couple fun pictures of just, I tend to almost geek out on bagworms just because I like to show the bagworms, they form their bag with whatever they're eating. So it's always looks pointy when they're eating on the juniper or the evergreen trees. But in the bottom picture here, right under the examples, it has been feeding on what looks to be a rose bush. And so it's got a different textured bag to it. So bagworms don't always look like they do on cedar trees. They will look at whatever, they'll form to whatever they're feeding on. Um, just as a hint of warning that they won't always look alike. Um, they also in the top right don't form just on trees. They will form on trees, they'll form on roofs as this one did on an overhang. It'll form on the side of a garbage can if it's sitting out all summer long like Bagworms don't really care. They'll form on pretty much anything, anywhere, as long as they can get some food to it. Last picture here is just one. Um, the one on the bottom left is with a bagworm coming out of it. And then if you look at your trees now or in, you know, the middle of the winter, if you see the bags that are in like the top left, that is a bag that a male moth has already come out of. So there's nothing essentially in that bag anymore. You can pick it off if you want, but the ones we are really worried about are the female bags. So what's kind of grosses people out, but I think it's kind of cool all at the same time. If you take a bag and you want to know whether it's the male or female, you squish it between your fingers. Once you squish it, if you can feel nothing in there and the bag just closes shut, then it was probably a male moth and it's already gone and out. If you squish it and it feels like there's something in there, that's more than likely a female with eggs in it. So you're gonna to wanna to pop that bag off and destroy that bag. So that's a fun way to tell the difference between the two if you really want to know that when you're picking them off or just you know play around with them. If you go out in June and or July and August and do that, you will find um, the worms in all of them and then you can just squeeze them out and look at them and take cool pictures and send them to me. Or me, because kind of like that. The last picture on this middle of the screen here is just shows how invested this one poor tree is on the golf course that needs to probably be taken out because it looks a little dead this spring. Is the big group of mass in the center of the screen is just all bagworms on top of bagworms on top of ba on top of bagworms. Um, I went up and touched the limb and it pretty much snapped off in my hand because of the weight of the bagworms. So. Just a little example of what can happen if you don't get your bagworms under control. Now I feel like I never got, Cassie, you didn't stop me for questions. I feel like I talked a lot there. So do we have any questions from anybody? Someone in the chat says, where can you find some of the sprays? Uh, you should be able to find them at any like farm and home store. So Orchelands or True Values or even Home Depot, Menards probably has them. Anywhere that sells insecticides, you should be able to find some that have label to it. I mean, even Ace Harbors or True Valley, True Falls, True Valley or anything like that should, any place that has insecticides, you should be able to find it. You probably even get it at your local co-op if you know your local co-op people. Stop now and see everybody's pretty faces. <laughs> Are there any other questions about bagworms? <laughs> have you questions you. about whether you, oh yeah. Or if you don't know if you have bagworms or just really want to talk to somebody who kind of nerds out on bagworms, you can give me a call and I'll come, I'll come look at them. Um, yes, Crystal, Dipole will not harm, should not harm your bees anyway, because they will only get the 
caterpillars in they it only gets the caterpillars so it shouldn't harm your bees Now everybody's going to go home and look at their, you're going to go outside tomorrow, I guess it is, you're all probably are at home and look at your trees and spray your bagworms. You're going to tell your neighbor to spray their bagworms, right? Because if your neighbor has them and you don't have them, you're going to have them in sooner rather than later. So you might as well just get on your neighbor. Any other questions about bagworms? You guys are a quiet bunch tonight. <laughs> Cassie, anything I forgot? Oh, you did a great job. But yeah, they're, they're definitely out and feeding. I've been seeing a lot. So if you haven't looked at your evergreen trees, make sure you go check them. Or your rose bushes. They tend to like rose bushes too. That's true, yeah. Those are the ones I see them on the most, is your evergreens and your rose bushes. 